Nani? Hello! How's everyone doing today? It's Jess and Malty from the GCA. And since our channel is all about entertainment in all of its forms, today we're going to be talking about writing. Because you wouldn't have any of the movies, any of the books, any of the comic books without a writer writing that story. So it's something that's near and dear to both Jess and I. So today we're going to talk about it. Now Jess, pins at the ready. Swish and flick. Swish and flick. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's get into it. Uh, as with all good origin stories, when did you start? What got you into writing? Well, and, you know what really, what really pumps up your gears. Well, how funny that we do the swish and flick analogy. J.K. Rowling is actually the reason why I got into writing, reading really? the Harry Potter books. Mm -hmm. Was what? Uh, if you don't mind, like, what age were you around then? Uh, I was around eleven or twelve. Okay. Were, were you there for uh, the Philosopher's Stone? When it came out, when it premiered? Mm -hmm. Or when it was released? Yeah, when it first came out. Book or movie? Book. I'm talking, oh, yeah, we're talking about books here. Oh, okay, okay. Um, the, the book, I remember people talking about it when I, at the time, I remember when um, everybody kept talking about it and going like, oh, have you read it? Oh my God. And then, um, Somebody in my family gave us a copy. Can't remember who. But then uh, my my mom read it to us for a bit. We're actually a bit younger. We were like five years old. And then I didn't get back into it until I was a bit older. But um, I do remember reading some of it. The first Harry Potter book when I was like five or six. And I, I, I got through some of it. But like obviously it was still a bit you know, more complex for a five-year-old. So I had to wait another couple years to actually like be able to comprehend it better. And from then on, I became a fan of the series too. It's a great series. I read every single book as soon as it came out. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm a little bit older than you, but I remember being in middle school when uh, when Goblet of Fire dropped, mm. and uh, it it was on like a three week waiting list. Because when you check it out from the school library, it's like everyone wanted to read it. So what what we would have to do is as soon as the lunch bell rings, you like scurry on over to the library rather than going to the cafeteria or to the gym to play basketball or something. And you try to grab it as soon as it's back in there. That's where I would go all the time. If, if I had a choice between going to recess or the library, I'd go to the library all the time. Or if we had a free period. Yeah. And I became friends with the librarian. She was a cool lady. And she's introduced me to many good books over the years. So it was fun. So what are some other ones? Uh, obviously, uh, the Harry Potty, the, the Harry Potty Mouse series, uh, that inspired a lot of people. And it, it's, it's something that still holds on till today. Like everyone, well, not everyone loves it, but like I love it. And it still has, we're about to have a new show with it as well. Yeah. And J.K. Rowling's still in the news. Uh, for not sure. reasons we probably shouldn't talk about here. But uh, yeah. yeah, were there were there any other books that books that sparked your interest? I mean, yeah, there might have been a couple. Not as great as the Harry Potter books, but maybe like even even like the some of the Goosebumps books, I'd even say. Because I did mm. read some of those. Deep cut. That, that that takes me back. I didn't even think about those. I read yeah, all of them. The, the first fifty four issues. We had every single book. Oh, we had we had like all of them. I think at our library, there was like, oh man, there's this one about a ghost and go eat worms. I think was mm -hmm. one of was another one. Yeah, that was one of them. And oh, I can't. Oh, it's been so long. But yeah. Monster Blood was a great one. Oh, I don't think I Attack got Attack of the Mutant. Mm. Night of the Living Dummy. Oh, I remember that one. It kind of freaked me out. 
That one really freaked me out, actually. A little off topic. You know, you remember when they had like the Ghostbusters? Uh, oh my gosh, the Goosebumps TV show. Yeah. Their uh, their first episode was the Haunted Mask, and that was the first time that I had seen like the uh, you know non corporeal heads from the mask like chasing her. That was the first nightmare I ever had. Was after I watched that. That's scary. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Obviously, it's a little campy nowadays, but. Back then, especially when you're young, when you're watching Are You Afraid of the Dark and Goosebumps and you're all into that stuff, you actually see it on screen. You're just like, ooh, that image stayed with me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, well, you know, even though, like, um, I'm not, like, a, a horror writer necessarily, there's still some, like, I have, like, some creepy things that were incorporated, like, before when I've written like short stories they weren't very good of course but um oh boy <laughs> someone's at the door you're getting doxxed already so nothing well uh, <laughs> apparently a plane just crashed in jess's farmyard so sorry about that a little quick cut <laughs> <laughs> let's get back to the conversation you know. Just make sure it's not for men in black. You don't, you don't want that little cockroach guy landing in your yard. Well, the chickens will eat him, so. <laughs> <laughs> they could survive a nuclear fallout, but they can't survive chickens. Exactly. It's good to know. <laughs> anyway, enough about me. What about uh, what about you? What got you into writing? Uh, I I'm trying to go back as far as I can remember. What I actually think it was, was being forced to play outside as a kid. So whenever you're outside playing with other folks in the neighborhood, your imagination runs wild and you make up your own stories doing that. You know, you, you kind of role play you your characters that you build from scratch and you don't know what the heck you're talking about but you're just like mm -hmm. "Ooh, that would be cool if this happened mm -hmm. so let's pretend this let's pretend that mm -hmm. and uh obviously the schools that i went to they were really heavy on english and grammar and so there was always a portion of the english class that was creative writing mm -hmm. and i just put my imagination onto paper so that's basically where it started and uh where i'm from the whole citywide, uh, all the school systems in the city, they had this little thing where if you wanted to, it was called Seedlings. And that was the name of this compilation of like poems, books, uh, not books, poems, stories, and art that uh, teachers could send in from their pupils. And if it got chosen, then you would actually be published. And so uh, I started that around third grade, and I was published every single year until high school where they stopped that. Wow. And yeah. It, it was just kind of like, it? almost like honing the craft. Most of my stuff was poems back then, but then okay. uh, in eighth, sorry, what were you asking? Oh, I was, I was just going to ask, like, if a lot of the stories in it were, like, more short stories, obviously, and not, like, you know, really long Things. Oh yeah, They're yeah, just, they were short. You know, short ones, yeah. Short until you get until you got to middle school, and then people got more into prose. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, actually, eighth grade was the year where I won a uh, grand prize of the of the entire city. So it was a five hundred dollars savings bond that I got awarded, and like a special, you know, commemoration ceremony and everything like that. And that wow. was the first prose that I had published. It was, a, it was a little short story called uh, Here's to You, Uncle Robbie. Oh. It was about a, uh, an ex-professional soccer player who got oh. into a car wreck and became a paraplegic. Oh, wow. But when he sees uh, when he sees his little nephew, like, tooling around in the yard, um, he goes out there and becomes his coach. Oh. And his, uh, his nephew ends up finding, like, the little... I don't know what you, I don't know exactly what you call them. You know, those old little like rolling, rolling desks that have the little thing that you, like the, the panel that you can roll up so you can have like picture frames and other stuff in there. And then whenever you want it to look flush, 
you just like roll the thing down. Yeah, yeah. So like yeah, in there he had like pictures from when he was in the World Cup. Oh. Wow. And like his news articles and everything, and he had it locked except for one day when he didn't. So oh, his nephew okay. saw that, and it inspired him to want to learn more. And Aww. so it's kind of like a like a a curmudgeon who loved his nephew but didn't want to talk about his glory days because he physically couldn't do it anymore and there was no way to save that. Yeah. But then when his nephew found out like they became closer. Aww. And then he taught him how to how to play soccer. So Oh, that's cute. Oh. And there I was just writing freaking Harry Potter fan fiction before I knew what fan fiction was. <laughs> That's what I did. Well, <laughs> You're actually writing something that was more original. <laughs> I will say, I was huge into poetry, but also weaving tales. But I, I will say, as far as like literary wise, um, what kind of pushed me to start writing more prose was uh, Lord of the Rings. There's a reason why it has such a huge spot in my heart. It's because I used to read The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings at least once a year. Starting from a very young age. I couldn't tell you the age because I'm old now. But mm. it's like Tolkien's work was always fascinating and it, it just flows so well. And I was enveloped with the characters. That's really where I learned character work as far as yeah, writing goes. Yeah, 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 yeah. With the appendices and everything. Like, yeah. he had all the lore in place yeah. already. So he could just, you know, plug and play with whatever uh, what, whatever story he wanted to tell. That's yeah. how I saw it at a young age. Yeah, I, I read The Lord of the Rings. Well, I tried reading The Hobbit when I was 13. I just couldn't, at the time, I just couldn't get through it but then it wasn't until i was 21 that i actually read the hobbit and all the lord of rings and i'm like oh my gosh look what i was missing but you know sometimes it just has to something just has to happen at the right time and there it was i probably yeah. wouldn't have appreciated it as much well there, Maybe, that's the great thing about books is that they're always there for you yep you it's never too late to pick one up. Physical media. Yay. Unlike these streaming services that are like going back and retroactively editing things. Huh. Yeah. 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 Not a fan. Yeah. Well, speaking of books, what about um, like genres, like particular genres or even like other media, like our uh, music that inspires anything that you write, and then we can go into that with me afterward. Well, uh, Sever, to this day, not to not so much, but it was a huge thing, um, especially in my formative years. I struggle very deeply with depression mm. um, and high anxiety. They kind of go hand in hand. I think they call it manic depressive. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So most of the stories that I write, they always have violence in them. Mm -hmm. At some point, it just happens. Mm -hmm. um, there's always some kind of emotional element. It doesn't have to be a love story. or Well, actually, I don't. Well, technically, my first screenplay could have been seen as a love story. Just mm -hmm. very tragic. Mm -hmm. But there's always some element of emotional attachment whether it just be family whether it be an actual lover mm -hmm. and there's always some form of violence mm -hmm. in there and i i make my violence brutal mm -hmm. i would like to like get into horror at some point when i write but as far as what drives me and what i uh what i kind of go towards it's a lot more uh, fantasy, allegorical stuff, and then sometimes just uh, interpersonal dramas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what about you? Well, for me, for the longest time, it was fantasy and science fiction. Some science fiction really depended. But I was obviously big time into fantasy. I read all these crazy fantasy books. Um, what else? I mean, obviously... 
Well, Harry Harry Potter is kind of tech. I, I think they called it like, do they call it portal fantasy or something like that? Because it's yeah, like you're, so, you're starting to sound like, like different genres of rock. Where it's like, okay, there's post hardcore, there's hardcore, there's metal core, there's grunge core, there's grind core. Like, well, portal fantasy is like it's fantasy. Okay, cool. I know, but like I've I've heard that term when I was researching with like you know. Uh, when, when, when you get it into the publishing realm, which is a lot of, that's, that's another, that's a whole other beast right there. But when you get into that, there's like all these other like sub genres of stuff. And it's like, okay, <laughs> there's <just> a <laughs> lot. But nowadays, um, I like mystery and thriller and crime, mystery crime police. That kind of stuff. Oh, you like crime? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jess was at January 6th. You heard it here. <gasps> like asp. No, I wasn't. <laughs> no, her side of the aisle was not part of that crime. But I digress. Oh. Let's not talk about that. Anyway, hi. <laughs> but now and then sometimes... Um, certain music would be inspiring or even like film or like sometimes pieces of art. It really, it, it really depends, but I don't know. Just, you never know when that inspiration will strike and you just have to write something down and I'll admit it here too. I read the twilight books and I did write some twilight fan fiction too. But it did not last long. Hey, everyone goes through their phases. It was a bad phase. It was very bad. I forgive you. I gave it up quick, though. <laughs> it wasn't until high school and then um, after I saw the first Sherlock Holmes film, Guy Ritchie's. And I was like, oh my god. I want to write a book like this. This is awesome. And then from there stemmed the novel I've written, which is a whole other story altogether. <laughs> oh, yes, we will be getting to that. Don't worry. Oh, snap. <laughs> um, I have noticed, um, because I've been like into the creative and performative arts basically my entire life, mm -hmm. just now getting into streaming, but. Uh, been in a, played in a lot of bands and uh, an emo kid. If you can't tell, I'm wearing yet another Alisana shirt. But uh, they were very, uh, their lyrics were always inspired either by Greek mythology or old mm -hmm. Edgar Allan Poe poems. So uh, yeah, they were very well read. And then the emo um, phase of the music, which connects with me on an emotional level i started to actually realize that these underground bands actually have something to say with their lyrics and they play their own instruments mm -hmm. it's not all through a midi board oh, that shit pisses me off but yeah they they actually take time to hone their craft learn their instruments make something that's appealing to the ears and then if you actually listen to the lyrics and the way that they're delivered with the screaming and with the singing the juxtaposition of those things emotes what the words are actually saying. So that was a huge thing for me as well. And uh, especially when I started writing my own music and not just playing in bands, but actually fronting the band. Yeah. And obviously with your um, previous, you know, writing poetry is probably really simple for you to write songs because kind of similar, obviously nothing rhymes. Maybe, but I don't know. I don't write songs. I can't. I was about to say, it's like, no, my poetry doesn't rhyme most of the time. Oh yeah, well, not okay. So there's there's rhyming poetry, then there's like near rhyme poetry, then there's poetry that's just like you know free reign. It doesn't rhyme at all. Mm -hmm. There's like you know that's like blank typical. verse. Yeah, or something. I I think there is a term for it, but I can't remember. Blank verse is the term for it. Oh, is that maybe? I... Mm -hmm. Sounds kind of familiar. There's free but verse and blank verse. Blank verse. Free verse. That's what yeah. I was taught. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's one th- one thing that I liked. Uh, and maybe it's just me being got a touch of the tism or something like that. But when I wrote songs, I almost never wrote choruses. So mm-hmm. Like the lyrics and my my songs, they hardly ever repeat themselves, if at all. Mm-hmm. It's this portion, this portion, this portion, this portion. They all work in tandem and they all tell a story. Mm-hmm with the music and with the lyrics and it, it, you don't there's no hook but every part at least for me i and i enjoy it i'm just like that is actually pretty daggum catchy i like that part i like that part but it's not just like we're gonna say the same thing forever like church music and it's catchy because it's only four chords so everyone's gonna get it stuck in their head and it's like no you should think about music it's an expression of the soul. So mm-hmm. anyway, that's how I view it. I know not everyone does. Oh, I think that's very, I think you're pretty spot on with that. I mean, any form of writing is an expression of the soul. I mean, you can't help but even put some of yourself in things like, I've put a bit of myself in some of my characters. You can't help it. But, you know, it helps make them feel more realistic but obviously there's other things that you know like even people you know you've known or or know even to this day um they get inspired by creating a character kind of like them but obviously you can't completely you know make the character that person because it's kind of like like a almost like a copyright thing a bit but uh, it's it's just you 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 just have to make things original. You can't like make an actual person. Yeah, uh, or you know, put an actual you, person in the fiction. It'd be Unless, like towing the line of plagiar- plagiarism. However, yeah, kind of like yeah. However, everyone is inspired by something, so yeah, everyone is. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to take that Mahler point of view. Uh, not that Mahler's point of view. I'm not saying that. But yeah. just the way that they dissect things. It's like yeah. everyone's inspired by something. So technically everyone is plagiarizing something. But it's just That's how how they turn it around in their hearts and their heads and weave that into something else. It's it makes it, not, their, it makes it its own new thing. Yeah, it's their unique spin on it, on whatever they were yeah. uh, inspired I mean, by. Ecclesiastes 23 from the Bible, uh, there is nothing new under the sun. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, everyone's going to be inspired by something. And guys, if y'all are inspired by anything, if you're inspired by anything we do, which I doubt it, um, <laughs> feel free to get out there on your own. Go hoof it. Yeah, you don't know. You never know what's going to happen if you get out there. You really don't. You will have to put in the work. Mm-hmm. It takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of effort. Mm-hmm. But if you're passionate okay. about it, that passion won't leave unless you let it leave, unless you kick it out the door. Yep, yeah. I mean, my my book started from a short story I wrote in high school for an assignment, and then it just became a novel. But it's changed a, a lot over the years because it used to be like a it, it used to be like a steampunk thing, and I. Mm. I, ch- I changed it. It was like steampunk urban fantasy with, I don't even know. It was really, it was really kind of convoluted. So I was like, because at the time, that's what, that's like, I was just reading all that fantasy and I was reading a lot of steampunk too. So I was like, oh, and you know, I wanted to put all that stuff in the book and it just, it, it ended up just being too much. It's like, what? is this book even about like does it even have a solid plot or foundation or anything so i i actually ended up like completely rewriting it and like cutting out a ton of chapters because there was like it was like six no like four no four or five like different viewpoints and i'm like okay i need to make it just two tops so now it's just two it's the main girl and the main guy and it switches back and forth. And it's actually the book that I actually wanted to write originally. It is definitely a Victorian mystery. But I mean, I, I and and now I'm like exceedingly 
I'm very happy that I took that. It took me like three, four months to just completely re rewrite it. But it was because I had a decent enough foundation that I could completely just like rewrite chapters and just, you know, basically, I mean, it, it, it was a lot of work, but still I'm really pleased with the outcome of it. I was very happy with it. Nice. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, what will be a multi-parter? I think it's been a great conversation so far. So much more to talk about. And um, follow us at the GCA, the GCA crew on YouTube. You can also find all of our links for our Twitters and everything else that we're uh, doing. Uh, Discord will be dropped in the chat. And we hope to see you again. Thanks, Jess. You're welcome. Thank you. E